Adani scam was brought out by Hindenburg research. In the media, uh, we see what is this organization? It's simply a short seller interested in making profit and uh, in a way that uh, that doesn't see uh, great public activity that Hindenburg Research is doing. So, I would like to say a few things on this institution or in this company. What is this company about? This is a an investment research firm, investment research firm founded by Nathan Anderson, Anderson only in 2017, very recent and it just has 9 employees in 2022. It is New York based. It says it wants to play a critical role in exposing fraud and protecting the investors. Why is this firm named after Hindenburg? The authors say that it is based on Hindenburg disaster which took place in 1937. Hindenburg was president of Germany between 1925 to 37. An airship was named after him and met with a fire accident and uh, it was a disaster that took place. The authors of this firm believe that it was a avoidable man-made disaster. So, uh, Hindenburg research is to expose unethical practices and to expose how disasters are in the making and protect the investors. Um, how does it function? It functions in through what is called short selling. What it does is that um, it takes shares, it takes shares or it borrows shares, borrows, better word is borrows from one company and then it sells these shares at higher value, at a higher value, it sells them and then it releases a report like it did on Adani and share prices fall, they reach at this level. And then this firm buys. So sells at a higher value, higher price, and buys at a lower price, and then finally returns the shares. And through this value difference, it makes profit. So, what it means is that it identifies, first of all, does a lot of research on what is overvalued and where there is fraud and then it 
tells the truth. But only when it thinks it is highly overvalued and because of the fraud, it in the first place it won't take up the project. Because only when it convinces others that there is a truth in its position, it can impact the market. So it is not simply like betting. It, it, it is releasing a report and that report should be convincing. Only when it is convincing with enough evidence, um, then other investors will think this company is in, is in trouble. And you know the research it carries is actually part of it is its own. Huge part of it is what others have already done. Others have already done. If you go through the report that it releases, it takes so many sources, so many news reports, so many sources. I mean at one point, at one place it gives the criticism and then possible connections with its own investigation and then it is a kind of a final assault. And then in the case of Adani, it challenged to uh, file a case against the report in the US courts. It is in a position to challenge. Okay. And it has successfully did this against certain um, prestigious companies before because of which the research firm has enough prestige and uh, trust. Of course, people go by the report, not simply by the institution. So, this is what it does. It means it is making money out of telling truth, from truth to profit. So, it is an extremely good thing. So, I would say this is a noble side of capitalism. Because what many people are doing, they by hiding truth, by hiding truth, they make money, some, okay, by not revealing truth, some media houses, they make money. But this firm tells the truth and out of the truth, it is making money. So this is a noble activity. I would say of all the profits that people make, uh, Hindenburg research pro profit, I would say, is of noblest kind. Okay. Uh, this is a new kind of uh, exposing the falsehood. What is the traditional kind and how far the traditional kind you can see? is ineffective particularly in such cases like Adani. I will take one case that is done by W. Economic and Political Weekly, you know this is a probably without an exaggeration we can say this is the most prestigious and worldwide recognized publication from India started in 1949. India's best scholars contribute. Okay. Then on June 24, 2017, an article appeared in EPW Modi government's 500 crore bonanza to the Adani group. And the editor was Paranjoy Guha Thakurta. The editor was threatened with multi crore defamation case. Even Samiksha Trust which owns and runs was threatened. And this threat was carried through a letter from a lawyer of Adani group. And you know, just this letter was enough for the trust to meet, for the trust board to meet and ask the editor, remove the article. And Paranjoy Guha had to remove the article and then he left EPW because he was warned that he can't write such articles. 
he was forced to remove and then he left. So this can happen to a very prestigious journal. Okay. This, this could happen because of uh, defamation case. Okay. So this is the fate of old style journalism. Uh, which is not able to meet these kind of new threats of legal suits from powerful corporate groups. Okay. So, compare, now compare this with this old style and this new. This man was able to, small organization, was able to expose, defend and threaten third richest man in the world and most powerful businessman in India, highly connected and then could expose and doing all that he was able to earn his own profit. That's why I would say this is this it is this kind of capitalism, this kind of capitalism should be encouraged, should be encouraged. People should be in a position to tell the truth and make profit out of it. It is that that should be encouraged rather than saying that he was simply a profit seeker. That is, that is a wrong way to look at this